hi there. So you want to do a QQ plot? That's pretty easy to do. I'm going to show you how. Okay. Now what you do is you go to analyze. Then you go to descriptive stats. And for some reason they put the QQ plot not under graphs as you'd expect, but they put under analyze descriptive stats QQ plots. But there's a logic for that I guess cuz uh it's one of the first things you might do part of your descriptive stats so click on that box appears and now all you have to do very easy is you take over the one or more variables into this variable box depending on whether you want a QQ plot for it so I've got this variable called sim I'll want that only for now and then that's pretty much it there are a whole load of options but really you know if you're running a QQ plot chances are you just want to kind of see if your data normally distributed so just note that by default test distribution normal just leave that out of interest if we look at underneath you can actually if you're interested test to see if your data follows any other distributions chi-square exponential t distribution etc but usually you want normal normal okay and then leave everything else and we then just click uh, OK all right, take some time to chug along to get the results, but finally we've got something. Uh, model description, ignore that, there's nothing there to see. We basically go straight down to the graph. Here you go. Normal QQ plot of my variable called sim. And you can see what it looks like. Okay. The idea is that if it, your variable is normally distributed, these dots, which each of these dots stands for uh, well, not stands for corresponds to um, a value in your observations, in other words, a data point. So if you add up all these circles which stand for data points, you'll come to the total number of observations you have for that variable. What we're not interested in, we're not interested in um, what the x axis and y axis are, not unless you're into interested in the theory of how you compute the QQ plot which you know 9 out of 10 of us are not we just want to see if our data resembles a normal distribution and so it seems to lie on the line doesn't it most of the time except for at the ends there the slight departure there's a slight departure we wouldn't expect even for normal distribution we would not expect every single dot to lie on that line just as with a histogram we wouldn't expect our curve to be perfectly perfectly symmetrical and that's because what we have is sample data and there's variation from sample to sample uh, but more importantly that uh, there's natural variation in the sample okay well that's the main plot but you'll see underneath it there's another plot uh, pretty much this is not part of the QQ plot it's called a detrended well what it's given you is detrended normal QQ plot just uh, you can just ignore that uh, all you need to do if you're going to present a QQ plot, this is it. Okay. Uh, for those of you that are interested, all this, all these dots are doing is it's looking at the deviation of each of these dots from that line. So you can see that's why most of them are centered around zero, except for the ends there, which are far. A few of them, these dots are far from zero because, as we see from graph here, the ends there, they depart. There's a, you know, there's a difference between the observations and the line. The actual values obtained from here deviation from the normal is the value on the line of a line minus the value uh, of the actual observation so this second dot here is that value on the line minus this value which is higher so you're going to get a negative value and that's why it translates down to negative value here's the second point like that just uh, slightly higher than minus 0 0.6 okay well that's pretty much it really um, as I said that you know one of the things is how, well, when it comes to interpretation of the QQ plot that's uh, something we need help with because I know we are more familiar with norm um, histograms than with QQ plots so what I've done is I've done this right uh, I've actually presented this in another video look this is fantastic this is very helpful because you can see that if your distribution is symmetrical then the corresponding QQ plot pretty much everything lies on that line so I've done like the ma major cases here uh, I've done the 
histogram corresponding to the QQ plot, or should I say QQ plot corresponding to a histogram which we know how to interpret. Something which is negatively skewed like this, look, that's what we call negative skew. This is what the corresponding uh, normal QQ plot will look like. There's a deviation from the line. And, you know, since I m made the previous video, I've had to look more at this and helps try to think how, how can we kind of um, recognize this plot here without the histogram. Well, look at it. What you can see is that if you imagine this line as the base, the x-axis here, what's going on is that you've got major departure towards the right end. Look, th this is like lifting off. It's the same as the histogram. As you're going moving along here, you lift off. See? So just think about it like that. Likewise, a positive skew, that's the hump there, and then it goes down, so it's like and then down here, so it's the deviation is at the beginning, and then it goes down, just like this, up and down, up and down. Okay. Finally, uh, fat tails. Well, this is less. Uh, if you're doing social science, it's less um, important. Just means that these are tails around here. It's fatter than the normal distribution. What you'll see is most of the points lie on that line in the in the center of uh, the data points. But towards the end, towards the tails, you're going to see a departure from the line. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, don't want to load you up with any more kind of irrelevant information, really. All right, um, except for I'm tempted. Uh, just for the eagle-eyed of you, I, I just noticed the theoretical quantiles going from minus four to plus four for a symmetrical case using exactly the same data, you just notice that in the SPSS version it goes from minus 6 to plus 6, doesn't it? Okay, well, this is for the observed value, this is for theoretical quantiles, so, you know. And as I said, don't be worried about the numbers on there, just worry about the shape. Okay, so I'll leave you with the most useful thing, which is this. Okay, hope that's been helpful.